Hey everybody, it's Harry from Slap Your Daddy Barbecue. I'm coming to you from Orange County in Southern California. I'm here with a bunch of teams and they are going to be doing a backyard steak cook practice. They're following the SCA style format, Steak Cook of Association. So I'm going to go around, introduce myself to the teams and see if we can do some shigging, show you guys some of the tips and tricks of some of the professional steak pitmasters behind me. City Pitmasters. Now today we're at the woodshed in Orange. What we're doing here is a Fogo takeover. So if you go on Fogo on their Instagram, you'll see us. That's why if you look around, we have a bunch of tents that have Fogo. So all these guys cooking today are from Team Fogo. We're trying to show you guys how it's like or, or the process through a steak cook-off. So there's organizations that hold steak cook-offs. Well, we don't want you guys to be lost, so we're sharing our knowledge of the past competitions we've been to. So we went step by step. We we steak selection set up, all that, and then uh, soon we're gonna start cooking. So if you look around, competitors are marinating their steaks now. So after marinade, you go ahead and throw that dry rub on there, and you're ready to cook. So and then we had Harry come and uh, feed us lunch. So. All right, man. So I'm gonna go around and shoot uh, the secret. So whoever wants to reveal the secret, I will shoot. And then I want to hear about the pits. I am searing my steak. Um, grill grates were a little hot, 625. I usually like them between 550, 600. But we want to go ahead and clean up all the char over here. I just got the first side. I'm going for a minute on each side just because I brought up this steak to 100 degrees before I threw it on. And we're using D spray. Um, they do ghee spray just because it keeps it shiny, you know. He is uh, basically a little step past clarified butter. So it's that, they extracted that um, water, right? Is that what it do, they do? Uh, uh, with water and solids. Water and solids, yeah. So um, we go ahead and use ghee spray. We'll do it for a minute. This grill is M16. The M16 is from M Grills. M Grills, Travis McGee, they've been around a few years now and he's actually uh done a great job at marketing this so a lot of those steak champions are using m grills some use m16 a lot of them use the c4 it's uh it's stainless steel uh quarter inch stainless steel i believe um super heavy um but easy to to manage the temperature i really enjoy using this grill the card um, comes with it or the card is extra? No, the card is extra. You can get the grill for $8.50. Um, the card comes separate for like about 400 bucks. I nice. It is a little too heavy to lug around, but it is the one that a lot of state champions are using. Uh, you got your Sandy Bull Brown, your... Um, okay. Yeah, tons of, tons of competitors are using it. So Absolutely beautiful M grill. Super solid stainless steel here. Fogo edition. Oh, it's a, it's a special edition this on top of that. This is a special edition one, yes. Okay. So, uh, cost, cost extra. Cost extra. Yes. You, can buy, you, can, you can buy this even if you wanted to. They, you know, there's a few edition. left. There's a few left, but you guys better act now. The limited edition here. Now, what, what is the purpose of these little, like, bumpers? I was asking myself the same question. Right, it for like... Maybe to uh, haul around. I've seen competitors, they make leather sleeves on this. So, I've, maybe to... to carry around I have reached the temperature I want okay yes it didn't now this is a problem you'll run into where you won't get you won't be able to get um, the sear marks on this side but as long as this side is good which it might have uh, been too hot but we'll see we'll let it settle how's it going everybody my name is Kyle I'm from SD smoke barbecue out of Ramona California uh, we're out here today cooking off some Fogo charcoal with my M Grill C4 for a little uh, little practice steak cook off with some guys doing a Fogo takeover. I don't know if you're familiar with this unit, but running the same thing that uh, the Bandit over here running. Good airflow. It's a, comp it's a compact unit. Paper towels in the way. Um, holds temperature really well, and it is easy to travel with. So a lot of the cooks we do, it's myself, my wife, my kids. We got to fit everything in the back of the truck. Throw it in this grill, and we're good to go. <laughs> So we're actually getting ready to drop a steak right now. Oh, perfect. Okay, uh, I came so, right time. Yeah, so my grill grates are good. Everything's good. I got my temperature set. And we're going to go ahead and orientate the steak the way we want it. We'll I notice everybody's using a steak weight. 
Yeah, so the steak weight's nice. It helps keep everything even um, while it's cooking. It helps get those even grill, uh, the grill grates across from the front to bottom. Some of the steaks will naturally curl up a little bit as they're cooking. So the grill grates, uh, or the, the weight's nice to have. Yeah, so I'm using uh, my little uh, thermal time stick trio here. I'd run a minute 30 and then rotate. Minute 30, and then what, what temperature you like on your grates? I'm shooting for anywhere between 530 and 560. Uh, a little bit too hot and your, your marks will become charred and will put an off taste on the steak. So once I get my sear the way I want it, I'll pull this forward and that actually gives a, an elevated cooking surface to where it's a little bit lower temperature, but I can bring the steak up to the desired temp. So um, with, with these competitions, we're shooting for a medium doneness on all the steaks. So I'll bring it up here and then I'll put a, a probe in it and actually watch temperature rise. We're shooting for about 135, 136, depending on the thickness of the steak. So carryover, you got to get into account too, how long, uh, how long the steak's gonna sit and what the temperature is outside. Um, you know, anywhere from 135 to 140 is probably your finish, finish doneness. So for this package here, um, you can get all on ingrills.com, look up the C4 SCA edition. I believe it starts off right at $400. How much? 400. So for a competition grill, it comes with the grill grates, it comes with the elevated, uh, elevated cooker here. I mean, everything's ready to go. You have everything you need to be. Excellent, four hundred dollars to be, get you started. Yeah, absolutely. A lot, a lot less expensive than getting an offset for twenty thousand. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's a special rack that you mentioned earlier. Yeah, and so, it's a kind of a warming rack that goes on top. Yep. Yeah, so this is the elevated cooking surface. We use this to bring it up to temp. So we just kind of go through and hit it a couple times. And... What, what are you shooting for today? So right now I'm shooting for about one thirty six. One thirty six. Yeah, one twenty four. One twenty five. So coming up, so yeah. maybe, maybe cook some more. Yeah. So just let it slide back in. Check it another two minutes. Okay. Wow. See where she's at. So this uh, contraption is really allows you to precision cook right down to the, exactly the temp you want. Yeah, absolutely. And so the, the nice thing about this too, with the same amount of charcoal, this thing cooks really, really consistently. Um, you know, the only thing you got to watch out for is if you get a, a strong wind coming in through the vents. Your temperature will shoot up, but as long as you're cognizant about the, the wind, you're good to go. It produces uh, consistent, reliable results on a regular basis. Nice. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks, sir. Okay. Hey, everybody. How's it going? My name is uh, Troy Camp. I'm from Bandit's Backyard Barbecue. We're based out of uh, Brea, California. We've got uh, our steaks selected. We've got it rubbed down, almost ready to hit the grill. The, uh, okay, so so the way, the way I do my steak and the reason why I pin it is just to keep it all together from you know a lot of times cooking at this high heat you know the the steak will split open so we uh pin it together keep it all together and make that nice for uh for our presentation for the judges and the and the pins will bring it all together make sure that it doesn't move at all this is our m grill c4 this is what we we run all our competition steaks on yeah the way the way this uh grill works is we got our our charcoal on the bottom we have our grill grates on top uh the grill grates are going to give us our sear marks on our steak when we're cooking this is basically like our little oven so after we get our grill marks and the presentation to where we like it we set this on top of our grill and we slowly get our, our steak up to the temperature our finishing temperature above above uh the charcoal all right 135 it came up perfectly yep. beautiful steak i'm gonna i rest it this is my non-presentation side i have my presentation type turned down oh wow. so what okay. i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna basically finish it and flip it over before it gets into the box and just dab my squares with a little bit of butter and then it's ready to go into the box. Okay. Yeah. Alright folks, don't ask him what it is. It's top secret. So no, no shaking allowed on this channel. Shaking allowed. <laughs> yeah. Looks like a lot, but it's not a salty rub, so it's not going to show in. I'm okay with getting my box, placing them in there, just putting little dabs of butter on the squares on, on the presentation side and it's good to go in. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Thanks. Thanks a lot, man. Awesome. Thanks yeah. a lot, Harry. You made me nervous, man. <laughs> Uh, my name's John Doman. Uh, I'm part of Tri-City Pitmasters with uh, Freddie and Jeff. We're three educators that, from our love and passion and hobby of barbecue, and kind of turned it into more of a competitive hobby. So uh, we're, we're doing this steak cook-off uh, 101 for Team Fogo, and, and we're here today at the Woodshed Orange County, and we're going to cook up some ribeyes. I got my ribeyes okay. right now sitting out coming up to temp. I usually try to get them to up to about 80 something degrees and okay. and try and uh, get it in that range there before I season them up before I uh, throw it on the grill and get cooking. I want to try and get the steak to look as good as possible. You get judged on appearance so I want it to look symmetrical. Um, it does look like it's open heart surgery here with all the pins and things like that so I tie it to keep the shape and the pins that I have stuck in the side as you can see at the front towards the spinalis area which is this strip here which is uh, what the judges eat 
uh, I, I go ahead and shove those pins through to keep the shape of the steak, but also to make sure that this fat here does not protrude up during the cook. Sometimes if you uh, cook a ribeye like that and you get this fat coming through here, the connective tissue, the fat will protrude, which will kind of get you marked down on appearance. So I want to try and keep it there uh, for as long as possible. And then right here, I have my uh, my th meter thermometer. It's a Bluetooth um, thermometer to make sure that I got the inter internal temperature right at where it needs to be for a medium cook on a steak. I usually do two minutes, then I'll flip for two minutes, then I'll do an additional two minutes and flip, and then an additional two minutes and flip. Total so, uh, eight minutes. Total of eight minutes, usually. Uh, something, it's, it's between about a minute and 45 seconds to about two minutes, depending on the, the temperature of your pit and, and the temperature of the grill grates. I like to run my grill grates anywhere between about 590 to about 620. That's the range I like to cook my steak on, on the grill grates. Well, the SCA judges will judge you on five different things. You're gonna have texture, you're gonna have doneness, you're gonna have appearance, overall impression, and doneness. Okay, those are the five criteria that they're looking for. So you wanna make sure that you can hit all of those. You're gonna get 10 points, around 10 points for each category. Uh, I'm using a PK grill. It, uh, it's made out of cast aluminum. You're gonna see PK grills. Uh, it's, it's a very common grill used on the SCA steak cook-off circuit. Um, I enjoy it. I think it holds temperature pretty well. Um, I usually use about two chimneys of charcoal to fill it up and then I'll go ahead and lay out some grill grates over the top of it uh, and, and try and find uh, a spot on those grates where I have an even temperature like I mentioned before of anywhere between 590 and about 620. That's the sweet spot and I'll go ahead and use uh, my temperature gauge here and, and, and I'll measure out each time I, I do a flip of the steak to make sure I'm, I'm setting the steak back on a grill surface where it is within that measure of 590 to 620. So these are some grill grates. Uh, uh, my partner here, Jeff's cleaning his up from the, the previous cook, but these, these are the grates that give you that good sear, that crosshair sear that the judges really like to see. Uh, a lot of people do crosshair or you can do diamond shapes depending on the way and the angle of which the steak is placed upon the grill grates. But uh, these, are, these are what we like to use uh, for competition steak cooks. I say diamond. <laughs> <laughs> but he likes 45, he likes the crosshair, he's a yeah. crosshair guy. Okay, so, so he's a uh, perpendicular 90 degree hey, uh, geometry. Just remember one thing, every girl loves a diamond, so there you go. <laughs> oh. I'm cleaning the grills because one, uh, it makes it a cleaner uh, uh, grill marks on there. So after each time you turn it, you're going to basically clean it off. I'm just obviously, I, I have, if you turn them upside down, it kind of burns off all the stuff from the last cook. And uh, somebody used mine and didn't really clean as well at the end, so I'm kind of getting them ship shape and ready to go for the competition. Yeah, additionally too, you want to clean off your grill grates because sometimes you, you'll you cook your steak and if you leave some debris within the grill grates, it'll taint the flavor of the steak as well. Yeah. You'll get a charred, burnt flavor and that's something you want to try and avoid in the steak comp. Excellent. Good job, guys. Thank you. Uh, my name is Christian. I'm Mad Cat Barbecue and uh, this is my SCA steak winning um, setup right here. Uh, just like a small grill I got from Amazon. Um, it's custom built. The grill grates have to be cut to fit this thing. Basically that's what um, my grill looks like. You obviously need a grill, a uh, small grill. I think it's better. That way it's easy to carry around. And then you have here a uh, steak weight. You know, whenever during the sear, you weigh it down so you get better sear marks. This is a windshield. Like the last steak competition I was, it was in Barbecue HQ. It was super windy. <laughs> so I noticed my temperatures were dropping and all that draft going in the grill, it cooled it down. So I hope, you know, this one will solve the problem. Okay, so windshield. folks, get your, this yeah. way, where is this from? You Ikea? can get that on Amazon for like Amazon. eight bucks. Eight each. bucks. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. And then what are the other doodads here of your top secret gear? Oh, so that's um, that stove top is to heat up my butter. I, I got some butter in here. And then, okay, what um, kind of butter? Salted, unsalted? I use unsalted. What butter. any particular brand? You always ask me. Um, I use uh, Lano Lakes. That's what I use. It's like a blue uh, blue box. You can get it at Walmart. So, and then I also put some uh, garlic garlic olive oil in there. Okay. And um, I also use. A little bit of your rub. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. Top so. Shh. don't tell people. Okay, <laughs> everybody's gonna be winning steak contest with yeah. this rub here, right? So it's the beef moolah rub. This rub, you know, made me first place, third place. So it's it's great. I love this rub. Thank you, Harry. Did you, did you tell okay, all so the umami a... flavor that you want is in this yeah. rub. So basically, you have to obviously keep track of time, and you got to prepare ahead of time. You come up with a, a checklist of what to bring and all that. Um, also. Practice, 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 I think is really important. 
basically I'm temping the steak right now and to get the perfect medium so I want it to be like around 135 145 around now so you can see it's 141 so it's good I'm gonna go and uh, put this in the presentation plate right here basically the judges will cut into the eye which is I think it's here and this is the this is a try hard steak it's um it's got three chambers so three muscle chambers and it's it's like the spinalis I believe I'm, I'm not really in technical okay. into it but okay. and this is I believe this is the eye so the judges will cut into the eye to check for the doneness okay. so let's let's do that let's cut into it yeah it looks like it's a medium well <laughs> A little over, yeah. A little over, you think? Yeah. Before I was doing, on this one, I was doing one minute and 15 seconds. I'm just gonna do it for one minute. One minute? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Hi, Steve Conaway out of Fillmore, California with Part Time Barbecue. Uh, today I'm at the woodshed doing a uh, FOGO take over the internet, a Cali Can Cook, cook with some of my fellow FOGO teammates. Today we're cooking ribeye steaks and uh, having a great time. Here's the secret, Dead Bird 180. <laughs> Those are the rubs that I use. Oh, okay. And this is the steak I'm cooking today. It is a tri-heart ribeye steak. I've trimmed it and I have it pinned and tied uh, before it goes on the grill. I do have a temperature probe. Okay, so I like to pre-warm the steak before it goes on the grill. Okay. It minimizes uh, some of the carryover temperature at the very end. And that's my pro tip of the day. If you're cooking a warm steak, you'll have less carryover at the end of your cook. The organization that we cook in, we're cooking for a doneness of medium warm pink center. And that's a, a little bit harder to cook to than medium rare, which is how we all really like steak at home. But here, uh, we're cooking to medium warm pink center. So in competition, they have a chart that shows relative doneness. And what a 10 is, is that perfect warm medium pink center. And judges can look at your steak once it's turned in and cut, they can look at your internal steak doneness and compare it to the chart. And depending on how off you are from that perfect picture is how you're scored. So you can be scored an eight and not know if you're under or over on medium warm pink center and that's where as a competitive cook you really got to be honest with yourself and understand where your cook is and keep good data and uh, go back and reference when we're practicing that's what we're doing we're practicing we're practicing certain elements usually done this we could be practicing temperature could be practicing appearance so um, my whole key is make your practices meaningful plan them out keep a list of a cook plan, okay, cook plan. and okay. reference your cook plan. Okay, that's a cook plan, right? Okay, so and you write a, everything down. That's correct. Yeah. Write everything down and, and alter it based on oh. how your cook goes. Okay. Now, these are your secret secret rubs, right? It's secret, secret <laughs> disguise. So Here's, folks, this is how the pros do it. They camouflage. Oh, he's going to show. Oh, don't don't look. Don't look, everybody. It's he's a secret. show you his secret rubs here. Okay. Here, so here's the secret of why I do this. Uh, it keeps my bottles clean yes. when I'm handling meat and handling the bottles. Yes. And then when I transport, I turn the glove upside down. So if it falls over, I don't lose rub. So that's why I do it that way. Uh, I have two base rubs. I have finishers to go on after the cook. Okay. I, I, can't, I can't show you guys, but uh, it's all hidden. So, but it's all top secret. So you have, you have to come see Steve for his award-winning secrets. I am cooking on a Hasty Bake Ranger. Uh, what I like about this is charcoal grill. It has a good amount of cooking surface, so I have options. And what I mean by options is I can cook my steak on turn one and then move it to another hot part of the grill on turn two. I'm not putting the steak right on top of the same cold spot. The other thing that's really nice about the Ranger is I can manipulate the height of the fire basket by raising and lowering the fire basket. Oh, wow. And that is... A tremendous advantage for fire management. Oh wow! So it's uh, like a little kind of pulley that you pull. That's correct. And the Chain whole thing comes pull up for my chi uh, firebox. Okay, I have the other one that is a crank. I have the crank. One. Yes, this is a portable unit. Yeah. Uh, this is their largest portable unit uh, called the Ranger, and uh, I really like it. Yeah, I have a Hasty Bake. It's fantastic. So, you yeah. know, whoever wants one, check the video description link. That's a Hasty Bake link to go check it out. So this yep. unit is very similar to, to the big one. 
Yes, it's just not on a, a pre-made cart. It weighs about 58 pounds. Okay, and then the same exact style. Yep. Today I'm burning uh, Fogo charcoal, the first ingredient, all natural. Uh, produces a great amount of heat. And very little ash, no binder, no junk. And I think it gives a great flavor to the steak. Okay. Rangers run about $800, roughly. It's a, so it's a premium pit. Yeah, yeah, it would be definitely a premium and pit. It'll last you a couple of generations and beyond. Stainless steel, so you can pass it down to your kids. Just starting our cook. Basically, I am setting the color, setting the grill marks, and uh, that's where I'm at right now. I try to practice uh, right before a competition. Try to do it at least once a week, just to stay on my A game, or wow. what I consider my A game. Yeah. Once a week, it's uh, like Olympics, right? You have to train. Yeah, like a marathon especially runner. you know, a full-time job and everything else that you do, right? So, absolutely, how we manage it. Okay, so now my timer going. Right. Keep a clean work surface. Wear padded gloves. Okay. And everybody's uh, steak looks like a hot, open heart surgery. Nothing. Well, Nothing very yet. little stuck, stuck because there's no up. sugar in the rubs. Okay. Clean it up. Rubbing it down. Doing Turning it 90 degrees. Oh, you're a 90 degree guy. Yes. Okay. So you're not a 42 and a half degree guy. Just not a 42 degrees. and a half degree guy. And then don't forget to run the timer. Start the timer again. Okay. Verify. And boom. Another 130. And that's one, 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 115. 115. Sorry. Yep. Yep. And then the next one is a flip. That's correct. So four. You touch it four times. And that's after that, you let the lady come up. You just put it aside. Let it come to the temp. Yes. In here or somewhere else. In here, in here. Okay. I use a rack. Oh, okay. And it's then I lower like a... the firebox down. Okay. On the Ranger, I can move the firebox. I'll move the right. firebox down. Put the rack in. Hold the steak here till it gets to my internal temperature. I like bring my temp my steak up the temper up to a hotter temperature than most people because it car it carries over less at the end of the cook. Um, if you're cooking from a cold steak, people win and walk doing that all the time. Produces a great steak. Um, however. There's more ambiguity at the end of the steak with your carryover temperature. You have to be mindful over and anticipate. And uh, with this method, for me, on this grill, pre-warming the steak tends to work out best for me. Very different pace than a KCBS contest. Yeah. Yeah, so this looks absolutely gorgeous. Ready for your flip? Yeah, very different competition than a KCBS. I started in KCBS, as you know, took your class, Harry, graduate of the Harry Sue Slap Your Daddy barbecue class, loved it, uh, took other classes. But the last competition we actually competed in, we grand champion, qualified for the American Royal, and then COVID hit. And uh, that was a great honor, And but we haven't competed in KCBS since then. And we transitioned over to State Cook-Off Association. And, you know, they held events in California in a responsible manner during COVID. We're all spaced out. When we're close to people, we wear masks, and uh, it's been fine. And the pace is very, very different than a KCBS contest. They provide the proteins here. KCBS, they don't. So the cost of an entry fee for a double is about what you'd pay for one Wagyu brisket. So it, make, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think it's fun. Okay, excellent. Okay, one last turn, right? Yep. One, and a half, one minute away. 30 seconds away. 30 seconds away. Okay. All right, great. Thanks so much. You Steve. bet, Eric. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thanks for the food. It was great. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right. So okay. we're in here at the judging table, and we're just starting to get the steaks come in. So we are going to be judging on um, five different areas. There's appearance doneness, texture, taste, and overall impression. And the max score is a 10 here. Um, and really, we have this picture here to give us some guidance as to um, how to judge the doneness. So um, we have our oyster crackers to cleanse our palates in between. And um, it is, again, it is a, a blind judging. We don't know who's bringing in which box. And this picture, this is um, how it should, the ideal steak should look with the grill marks and the color and the doneness, the appearance. The 10 is the, the best score that you can get. Does the steak look appetizing? Do you wanna dig into that steak and try it? Um, so the 10 would be, you know, the grill marks look 
beautiful and it's symmetrical. Um, it doesn't have any loose pieces hanging off and um, no, probably no big chunks of seasoning. Okay. And then is it weighted or then it's a straight number? Um, it is a straight number. So the maximum is 50 points. So the taste actually, you have to give it a decimal point score. So um, it would have to be, it can't be a straight nine. It would have to be like a 9.1 all the way up to a 10.9 maximum score. So the taste is weighted just a little bit more than the other categories. What we're gonna do is cut this down the center so we can get the doneness done. Um, I'm gonna open up the box, cut it, because I'm also judging, and we're on 19. So pull out your 19 scores, guys, because it's gonna be the first one coming down, okay? So we open this up, and you see this blowout right here, but because they put it in the box up here at the front, this isn't even going to be looked at. So this, they're not gonna get graded down. I'm gonna cut it right here in the middle, like so and slide this over to the side, right? So they can, this is what they're gonna do the picture on and this piece right here. And then this is all for tasting. And since I am also uh, a tasting judge in this, I'm gonna take a piece and pass this on down. Open it up, do your score. And we're gonna do this one. Number 16. I have this one a little bit cockeyed, so, but it's still halfway from the bottom. And here we go. Okay, I got a good shot of that. Nice. Okay. Now it's blind to these guys, but we, we know what ticket we're giving out, so we've already put our names and numbers on. That's all I'm doing. And as the cutter, you kind of have, you want to give them the best possible cut, right? You don't want it to come down to the way you cut it. Now, this looks like it's put in kind of funny, but if you look at it carefully, look at the spinalis. This is what he wants us to eat, right? And huge spinalis, he got a good one. Good steak. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you, Team Fogo, I can call all you guys. Now, all you guys are worthy of, of a prize. Unfortunately, we only have top three today, all right? Winner gets $280, and then Patty provided us with a little uh, goodie box over oh, here. Oh, Patty, thank you. Thank you. Aside from that, she provided us a place to barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you. Patty. And part. then uh, thank you, Fogo, for letting us take over your Fogo Instagram. Yep. All right, and thank you guys for being here once again. Thanks. All right, with a score of third place. 245.3. We got 2022. Yeah! Oh! All right. providing you with. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. John Doe with Tri City Pit Masters. Kelly can cook, baby. All right. Second place with a score of 248.7. We have two zero, two zero. Yeah! yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Hey. We're all from right. California. It's Christian. I'm Matt Cat Barbecue. Yeah. Kelly can cook. All right. Actually, Team Logo is providing you with no. Oh, super premium lump. First place and winner of two hundred and eighty dollars. There is no ticket here. Sorry, guys. Um, but. Ticket number 2018. All right. Yes, here it is. Now inside those uh, inside those envelopes, you have your scores. All right, and then right. Uh, let me present you with your lump charcoal. Nice. nice. Steve Conaway, Fillmore, California, part-time barbecue. And uh, thanks for Fogo and Freddie, and it's been a great day. Thanks for Woo. great day. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, Steve. <laughs> great job. Harry. Great job. Thank you. It was fun. I had a great time. All right, man. Yeah. Part-time barbecue in the house. Okay. Cooking the Fogo. Okay. Excellent.